Jump scares are a staple of horror. Popularized by classic horror movies such as Carrie and The Shining, they were always a way to get the audience to quite literally get scared and jump. Jump scares slowly but surely became a huge scaring technique, even outside of movies. They were absolutely everywhere. Shout out to my dad for showing me the classic energy drink ad where a car is just casually driving down this hill only for a zombie to pop up and scream at you. I was like four when I saw this and I don't think I've ever been the same since. And of course, jump scares are quite prominent in video games. Resident Evil, Outlast, the goddamn Slender Man, all of these had jump scares. I mean, arguably one of the largest video Video game franchises of the past decade was built around jump scares. You think someone would make a whole game about them at this point? They already did. In 2014, the game studio Albino Moose Games dared to take on the task and released the horror game Spooky's House of Jump Scares for the PC. It was then changed to Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion due to our good old pal copyright infringement. With multiple DLC game modes, a remastered deluxe edition, and console ports all releasing in the years to follow, this game definitely was well received. I would see Markiplier play it, Germa, Markiplier again. Okay, I never actually interacted with this game outside of like watching two videos on it. So after many years of wanting to check it out and a lot of comments telling me to, I finally decided to play through Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion and see once and for all, is it as good as the people say it is? Spoiler alert, the answer is yes. I think I'd take a bullet for this game. So for this video, I'll be taking a look at the HD revamp of the game. Sorry to the OG Spooky fans out there, but this one has Steam trading cards. The game opens up with a text scroll. A legend about this haunted mansion has been passed around for centuries, and being the history enthusiast that you are, you decide to trespass and go into the so-called fortress of darkness you probably won't escape from. Hitting the main menu, you've actually got multiple game modes to choose from. There's the mansion, an endless mode, two expansion game modes, and a build your own mansion. Which sounds fucking sick, but it's not actually out yet. We'll start off with the mansion, which after selecting, throws you immediately into the game. You encounter the main antagonist, the titular ghost girl herself, Spooky. She explains that you must make it through 1,000 rooms to escape the mansion and up, uh, just don't die. Or do die, I'm pretty sure she wants you dead. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, this game is very simplistic. You're exploring in first person with a health and stamina bar. Both regenerate, but at different speeds. Interact with E, hold shift to run, read the papers by reading, pretty standard stuff. Now, to progress through the game, you have to make your way through randomly generated rooms. Some of them are as simple as just going through the first door you find, but as time goes on, minor things like choosing the right path or finding the right order of directions are added into the mix. The level design itself is never really tricky, but it can add to the difficulty when it does get harder later down the line. Now, I know what you're all wondering, where are the jump scares? Now, while mostly being prominent in the first 100 rooms, the jump scares mostly consist of these silly little fellas popping out from the wall. They can appear anywhere at any time, and despite their silly nature, they can actually get you time to time because, well, th they're jump scares. I mean, I've never leapt out of my chair into the ceiling from seeing them, but I felt them in my chest like once or twice, and I mean, that's something. Beyond all the stuff that I've described, it's not easy or right to generalize the rooms and obstacles any further, so I've decided to split them up by every 100 rooms, covering what's in the rooms and what's introduced separately. So hold on to your official Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion bag hanger, it's about to get, dare I say, spooky. So the first 100 floors are pretty easy. Hell, until floor 50, there isn't much change in the room designs at all. One thing you see as you traverse the mansion are these notes left behind by someone who went through the mansion before you. All I took away from these was that they liked saying the word romantic, they drank ink, and then they drank blood. More on this brave soldier later. Oh, I forgot to mention, every 50 rooms you hit a save point and take an elevator down down to the next area. I appreciate Spooky putting up these motivational posters. I would have immediately quit at floor 50 if it weren't for Papa John's. Outside of the creepy atmosphere and the occasional jump scare, there really isn't much of this game that classifies it as scary. Kinda odd that a horror game has nothing else to- oh, what the fuck? where did that come from? Meet the specimens. They're the various monsters who chase you throughout the rooms and try to kill you. Each of them are unique in what they do and how they look. Even the silly little jump scares are are technically specimen number 
number one. I mean, I guess I'm not too surprised. According to this database you can randomly find, these jump scares have killed four people. That is hilarious. The first dangerous specimen you come across is Specimen 2, who's a semi-liquid guy who can slow you down with puddles and slowly chase you throughout the map. It's pretty easy to avoid this one, just tank through enough rooms and puddles until they disappear. Get used to random encounters like that. While that one was scripted and there are more scripted chase scenes to come, the chase scenes can pop up pretty much any time with zero warning and they make up most of the gameplay. Oh, also you can randomly find this room with a bunch of arcade machines. This first one is a Pac-Man clone and when you win, you fucking spear Pac-Man through the body. <laughs> okay. Another one is a stabbing game where you stab a lot and go fast and stab so some more. Lastly is this racing game where your goal is to cause as many car crashes as possible in a short amount of time. Sounds like my drive to work. There's also this one that's out of order. Now it did eventually have a passcode on it in the later stages, but I never found out what it did and I never will. I'm gatekeeping this secret from myself. What I won't be gatekeeping though is talking about Gamer Subs, the delicious energy drink mix with tons of amazing flavors that'll really jump scare you. In, in, in like a good way though, not like the scary way, I swear. Use code TOADBUP at checkout for 10% off of your entire order. And if you don't, I'll gatekeep the entire video from you. I'll just close my eyes, plug my ears and go, nah, 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 nah. I'll do it, I swear. That's all there is for the first 100 floors, a pretty relaxed start for what's to come. On to rooms 101 to 200. This one opens up with some new styles of rooms, consisting of bridges, brown older bricks, and this one room with a phone that just pisses me off because they never get to the goddamn point. They just keep saying, hello, you are not the phone guy. You eventually stumble upon this strange lab with these giant vats full of creatures. This is where it's revealed that one of these creatures escaped, which is the introduction to Specimen 3. This one's my least favorite. It's a giant centipede that crawls out of these burrows randomly placed in the room and changes chases you at the goddamn speed of light. I'm already not a fan of centipedes or millipedes, so this one generally creeped me out a few times. I made sure to haul ass. After I found this room that repeated itself a few times and then jump scares you when you turn this corner, I reached another save point at 150. Exploring onward, you come across these new rooms that seem to take place in a dark classroom. Use a flashlight to navigate and don't run into these shadowy dudes. I honestly had no clue what happened in that moment. I will say, I really like whenever a new monster is introduced. They have these large scripted portions with brand new area that gives backstory to who the specimen is. Oh yeah, there's a new specimen again. Specimen 4 is this bloody ghost girl that plays music and phases through the wall to chase you. Bloody in like the literal sense, not like the British word. Bloody ghost girl. There's a few new rooms such as this small maze with two endings, but other than that, nothing really new here until you hit the next save point. Definitely ramping up here a bit with two new specimen. Let's move on to to the 200s. We're already doing way better than the previous person in this mansion. According to them, they couldn't even handle a pile of goop and a dead oh. child. I will give them the centipede though. The centipede is terrifying. You come across this factory area with a bunch of weird rooms, including this screaming fleshy room. Ew. This introduces Specimen 5, who's this mannequin thing that slowly chases you with a big sword. Super easy to avoid, but they will change the wall textures on you from time to time, and that's a little annoying. After some more random rooms and specimens, you finally reach the quarter checkpoint at room 250, where Spooky herself congratulates you. She even gets you a gift. I sure hope it's not a bunch of jump scares behind me. That'd be too scary. The rest of the 200s are pretty straightforward, it's just more randomized room with specimen that can appear. I did find this one room with this infinite hallway. Honestly, it went on for so long that I thought I might have broken something, but nah, eventually you get frozen in place and attacked. Now in a new room and unable to move, you're hit by the big red tickle monster and killed. This guy won't show up again until the very end of the game, keep him in mind. Anyways, you reach another save point and it's time for the 300s. From here on out, you can only save every 100 rooms, so you have to play it just a bit safer. Room 310 consists of these dark, almost ancient looking rooms and hallways. Various notes tell a story about a puppet salesman who came to a town and was quite successful. Bitter that they couldn't get the bag, they threw all of his stuff in a river and he drowned trying to save his stuff. Joke's on them though, because now their kids are disappearing and probably being turned into puppets. And all of this just because you couldn't make a stack. 
Anyways, reach the end of this large room and you finally encounter the puppet man himself, Specimen 6. You know, I take back what I said about the centipede, this guy is the worst. He seems very much inspired by the happy mask salesman from Majora's Mask, or maybe just the game in general. Anyways, to avoid this creepy ass dude, turn around the second you open a door as to not get backstabbed. He'll teleport behind you again after a little while, so make sure you keep a close eye on him. After this, the 300s are relatively uneventful, except for this giant a brain I found. Oh, we'll revisit this piece of shit later on, don't you worry. And that was the 300s. Outside of the puppet introduction, it was mostly just randomized rooms. Nothing wrong with that, especially because the 400s are absolutely insane, so a break before was probably needed. Like usual, around the 10th room, in this case room 410, you come across a new area, probably the strangest one in the whole game. To enter room 410, you literally have to shatter the threshold of consciousness. It's a crazy leap to go from silly cardboard jump scares to fucking transcending planes of existence. You come across this giant clock tower and a talking white cat, both of whom will appear every few rooms or so. One room you could stumble upon is this Spongebob and Patrick ass place with a giant arrow in the middle. Another room is this empty place with some computers, another is this infinite void, all with the same white cat talking in cryptic messages. Eventually, the cat says bon voyage, and you're left to travel through some crazy red tunnels. Also, Specimen 7, aka the Fortnite Storm, is closing in on you, so you better be quick or else you might get cornered and gobbled up like I did the first time. I really like the variety of specimen here, they're all kind of boiled down to just being chase scenes, but each one feels really unique from one another, both in abilities and design. I, for one, am a big fan of the evil Fortnite Storm. The rest of the rooms were once again randomly generated. I did come across that computer again where I was actually able to read up on the specimen. Okay, you're telling me I'm the only person ever killed by the red dude? I ran out of the room in embarrassment. I got chased by the goop man, the ghost girl, and bam, I finally reached the halfway point, room 500. Spooky once again finds you and is just so thrilled you're alive. No, really, it would totally suck if you just dropped dead right now. She did fix the doors for you though, so that's nice. Except it's not nice because she sends you all the way back to floor 50 and you have to redo all 450 floors again. Nah, I'm just kidding. The number just fixed itself after a few rooms, but that'd be crazy if they actually did that. There's a few new rooms added to the mix, such as these purple rooms. You all know that I love the color purple. Room 550 is where things once again change. You're thrown into this weird yellow foresty area with some cabins that you can explore. There's also deer present in the area, so it's cool to see some entities that aren't trying to constantly kill you. Wait, why did the game just give me an axe? Okay, yep, god forbid there be someone down here who wasn't trying to skin me alive. From this point forward, you now have an axe to use. It can be used to kill these deer, cut down barriers that are blocking doors, and can even stun various specimens. Also, if you hit a couple specimen with the axe like I did in the very beginning, you will unknowingly set yourself down the path for the bad ending halfway through the game, and there's really nothing you can do about it. Whoopsies. The notes talk about how this one chap tried to eat a deer, and just like me, got attacked in the process. I don't think he made it out alive though, because after you traverse a few more rooms, specimen Specimen 8 is introduced. Specimen 8 is this crazy skeleton deer who floats towards you. I'm sorry, is that an over the garden wall reference? Anyways, this specimen has a unique movement pattern as while they aren't too fast in chasing you, they can face through the closest wall that's in between you and the specimen. After figuring out how the specimen worked, I developed a strategy to just keep them close by in case there's any curves so that they didn't get the jump on me. Trust me, it scared the absolute shit out of me when I would turn around and he would just phase right behind me. It's almost like this is a horror game or something. There's not much else to do in the 500s after this. You do find some notes about this person thinking they're the main character. Take a wild guess how that ends for them. It's time for the 600s and once again when you hit the 10th room there's a scenery change. This time you're in this futuristic lab area. It's dark and everything's closed off at first but after you flick on a generator you could finally look around. This place is called GL Labs. You see a lot of these bozos later on. The lights switch off pretty fast soon after, and after hopping an event, you find some ominous notes talking about a danger that befell them. 
A flashing lights warning because this is the introduction to Specimen 10, who's this alien with a huge mouth that can turn into a worm. This one was a bit annoying because to survive this monster, you had to stick close by it. If you go too far, it goes full worm mode and chows down on you with some good old flashing lights and everything. I was lucky because this specimen only popped up this one time for me, so I didn't really have to deal with it too much. I give it 6 worms out of 10. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's a new style of room now. It's this, uh, beige tile look. This is not much else to say. Also, update on the main character person. They want an enemy who is cute. <laughs> Don't worry guys, I'll step up. After another centipede encounter where I chopped it in the head, the 600s were over. I'm also pretty surprised there wasn't anything at room 666. Maybe horror games have just melted my brain to the point where anything with that number has to be evil. The 700s are probably my favorite floors in this game, except for when the puppet man came back. I was not a fan of that. This time in room 710, you're trapped in this haunted fast food place following the notes of one of the workers. Searching around, you find out that the worker avoided eating the food of the their workplace as much as possible, but eventually had to because they didn't really have a real lunch break so they could go and eat somewhere else, which sounds a lot like my first job and I'm not even joking. You can eventually discover a play place, which I mean, has anything ever good come from a play place in a horror game? I played Security Breach, I know how this goes. Also, there's one last note describing how the worker quit after eating one of the burgers and having crazy visions of an inhumane figure chasing them, causing the worker to veer off the side of the road. This is exactly what will happen if you eat Burger King. After exploring the play place, you get back to the restaurant and grab a key. Trying to leave gets you a visit from none other than Specimen 11. They're pretty much a giant floating McDonald's demon who slowly follows behind you. Another flashing lights warning because this specimen just likes to randomly flash colors and images on the screen, mostly at random. But also when they do attack you, they'll do this annoying thing where it makes the doors disappear. So pray that you either remember the layout of the room or get a really easy room. Once this little Burger King adventure is over, you can finally make your way up to room 750, one of the last major checkpoints. Spooky once again pays you a visit and and once again, just loves that you're still breathing and whatnot. She even gives you infinite stamina, which will make it so you can never run out of stamina again. The only issue is that you can't actually sprint anymore. So, I mean, she wasn't lying. Your stamina won't run out anymore. Anyways, this silliness goes away after a few rooms and you can run once again, completing the rest of the 700s. The 800s are pretty much the same as prior sections. Hit a new area and the specimen is in the 10th room. This time, you have to explore a mansion inside the mansion. That's like PEMDAS or some shit, I don't know. Anyways, the mansion itself is actually Specimen 12, and you find some notes once again from the person that was here before. The specimen isn't only the house though, it's also this old man who's like evil. Uh -huh. While progressing through the various rooms in the mansion, you'll have to hide away from the old man. It's super easy though because this geezer has the IQ of a f***ing stonefish and doesn't think to look in the only closet in the entire room. I mean, I live though, so at least there's that. Traveling more around the mansion, you eventually come across this weird dusty crawl space. Besides the lovely range of skeletons, not much down here except for a key that you need to escape. This is when Specimen 12 goes on the attack, which is just an old dude, but with a scythe. Super easy to avoid this person, just move quick and don't look back. The rest of the 800s are fairly simple. I had a couple specimen encounters and I came across the floating brain in the tube again. The bright young man that I am, I decided to try and break the tube with the brain in it. It then proceeded to fly out and instantly kill me. That's like half an hour I'm never getting back. I mean hey, at least I got an achievement for it though. We're to the final stretch here with rooms 900 to 995. Now what insane monstrous specimen await us this time? WATER! Reaching, you guessed it, room 910, you're introduced to this strange ocean research facility. The notes state that they were researching whales when the entire facility was beginning to flood, and then eventually something started picking the staff off one by one, and that was none other than Specimen 13, who I absolutely hate. So Specimen 13 hides in these water levels, and anytime you're in the water, they immediately book it towards you. You gotta hop on these crates to survive and make it to the end. It just takes forever. Specimen 13 was puppy guarding so hard, I swear. However, once you're able to overcome the gauntlet of slightly inconvenient water levels, you're free to move on and complete the rest of the levels until room 995, with one last save point. Room 1000 is finally here, as you enter the exit door into a grassy plain area. 
I'm not really sure what's going on at this point, but it's so nice to finally be in a peaceful area with God damn it. So Spooky pulls one of her famous trolls and throws you into the simulator thingy. Instead of letting you go, Spooky decides to put you to one more test. This test is none other than fighting the final boss, the Red Tickle Monster from earlier? Oh, you better believe I'm getting my revenge. There's a few attacks that this boss will cycle through. These giant screaming pillars that come up from the ground, these shadow grabby hands, silly zombie guys, and these mini suns that get shot at you. To damage the boss, you have to hit the suns back like a ghast blast and wail on him with the axe once he's down. After doing this a couple times, you finally defeat the boss. So remember earlier when I said not to swing the axe that much? Well, depending on how much you used it on specimens, you'll get one of two endings. The bad ending, which is what I got, has you being turned into a specimen after Spooky notices how good you are at, you know, killing. The good ending has you dying? And then joining Spooky as a ghost to invade the earth? Okay, so it's not really a true ending, except for this one joke ending that I didn't get. I like the balloons in this one. And that marks the end of the mansion mode. Honestly, I had a lot of fun. The various different specimens and how they were introduced were pretty unsettling and cool. They all felt pretty unique from each other and weren't too much of a pain to deal with. Despite being a thousand rooms long, the game really didn't feel like it dragged on much at all. In fact, it only took me like three hours to beat the whole thing. Honestly, I could see myself going through this game again. It was a super fun time. Oh, but no, we aren't done just yet. We have two whole DLCs to go through, and while I originally only wanted to focus on the base game, I felt it wasn't fair to not include the two side stories. So let's talk about the two expansions, Karamari Hospital and Spooky's Dollhouse. We're gonna start with Karamari Hospital because hospital settings freak me the fuck out in horror games, and I am not lying. First up is Karamari Hospital, the first DLC released for the game in 2015. I'm really not a fan of hospital settings in horror games, so let's see how this one goes for me. After dropping down the elevator at an alarming rate, <laughs> is he gonna be alright? You come across Spooky and a brand new room. After Spooky pretty much goes, damn that's crazy, good luck, you can venture on into the hospital. There's no concrete number of rooms like the base game, it's just a basic building that you need to explore more and more of. At first, this place seems pretty calm and normal with a nice bright atmosphere and soothing music. That is, until after exploring the upstairs room, you begin to read the notes. The notes talk about this nurse who's been uh, just having a real rough time at work. You know, watching the doctors butcher patients, ripping out livers and putting them on the table, having an evil alter ego that can't be controlled. Actually, you know what? This is pretty standard for any nursing major out there. To venture on further in the hospital, you need to go downstairs into this darker area and find the office TM key. After doing this, you can unlock a brand new area of the hospital to explore. This is where you find out about that liver. It's not important, but I think it's silly. You're now tasked with finding a medallion to put into this frame. However, some areas are electronically sealed off. You once again have to plunge into the basement, and once you shut the power off, you turn the hospital into a dark red wasteland and the doors are now deactivated. After accidentally stumbling upon the most horrifying room I've ever seen in my life, I skipped and hopped my way down to the stairs from hell. You can find some acid, the medallion, a flashing lights warning for the rest of the hospital DLC from here on out, and you could go on your merry way. That is until this body bag starts hauling ass towards you. I didn't even turn around to check. I was out of there. After that little scuffle, you could pour the acid on the meat tentacles, and you can now make your way to put the medallions in the plaque and go down these scary red stairs. Woohoo! I did this at 2.30 in the morning. I hate scary <laughs> hospitals. Let's go. This next part has you looking for another key, this time for the isolation ward. You have to travel your way through this weird green foggy area where a weird floating baby head will patrol the hallways. At this point, you actually come across what appears to be a Game Boy Advance and you could play a random dating mini game called Sunshine Academy. Being the charming young man that I am, I took on the task of playing this game. I talked to the person and she died not even three days in. God damn. It. This simulator is just a silly scary mini game to take a break from the hospital. You always get the same looped ending of repeated silly messages, but you can get yourself expelled from the school if you play enough times and then open up with the worst dialogue options possible. With that out of the way, you can finally find the key to the isolation ward and OH SHIT DEAD GUY! This next specimen is a bit of a pain, he'll only stop moving if you're staring at it, a fact I didn't know until much later. He can teleport randomly, so just uh, keep track of him while you're 
fleeing. I tried consulting Sunshine Academy for help against the monster, but according to this achievement I got, the monster didn't like that I was playing the game wrong. Anyways, escape the dead dude and make your way to the final area, the isolation ward. After finding out that that one nurse from earlier pretty much lost it by blasting their head with radiation, you could traverse to the final area. More notes can be found here, revealing how Spooky actually died. It turns out that Spooky was a bit too much of a prankster, as her antics enabled somebody's PTSD and got her shot. I like that these DLCs expanded on the story of the game. While there was some story in the base game mode, it really wasn't anything to do with Spooky herself. You can now exit the hospital, with Spooky once again being like, damn that's crazy, keep going, and this marks the end of Karamari Hospital. I really enjoyed that one. Although it was kind of short, I really enjoyed being able to explore through the hospital setting. Now, on to the final expansion, Spooky's Dollhouse. Now, the question is, is it worth the hype? Well, you get a gun, so... yeah. Now, unlike Karamari Hospital, Spooky's Dollhouse is the direct continuation of the mansion story and is the true ending to the story of Spooky. Spawning in a random hallway, you eventually come across a door that leads you into the dollhouse. You're informed that due to, uh, I don't know, mold or something, your health won't regenerate, and similar to the hospital, there are no room numbers here either. Also, now when you get close to something you can interact with, an eyeball or a hand will appear signaling that you can interact with it. I was so confused when I first saw this, and I honestly thought I was just immediately under attack by something. The main gimmick of this mode is the doll. Those silly guys over at GL Labs give you a doll you can use to both heal yourself and progress through the story. You can use it to heal by clicking, but if you overuse the doll's healing abilities, then they just cover your eyes and won't heal you anymore. I thought that this meant they were gonna kill you because as soon as I got the doll, I started shaking it as fast as possible. After picking up a map of the house, you can finally continue from the starting area. So a brief summary of all the notes you find, basically GL Labs was messing around with summoning spirits and trying to trap them into different vessels, like with the doll that you carry. This experiment was headed by Spooky's father, who was actually trying to summon Spooky herself and put her in a vessel so she could come back to life. She could probably tell it didn't go very well. More on that whole thing later. Exploring through the house, you come across things like a locked grandfather clock and a key in the piano. Immediately after getting the key, you get jumped by these gross baby things, ew. Literally just sidestep around them, they don't really pose a threat at all. Also, there was some note about like someone shooting their dad. Great, you actually need that for later by the way, I'm not joking. Use the key on a door to access the right wing and you could explore even more of the house. After a surprise mutated baby attack and a nice tea break with your bestest buddy, the doll, you come across a locked door to a storage area. Oh, whenever you see these tables, you actually have to set your doll down so that the door can open. You find the key for the clock from earlier next to this dead monster and after you pick it up, they're not dead. They're not dead! This new enemy, which I like to call Long Larry, is essentially a speedy version of the baby enemies from before. Just haul ass before they can see you and you're chilling. Also, when you see this hole in the wall, don't put your arm in it. Bad idea, I know, but I just, I had to do it. It was right there. You can now unlock the clock and you have to set the time to 545. How do I know this? Well, do you remember that one dead dad note from earlier? It was actually crucial to the game. Duh. You can now grab a pair of bolt cutters from the clock and take them to this wired off door where you can now enter into the garden. From here, after you pass this gravestone, which L plus ratio to this goofball, you could explore even more of the house. Oh, it uh, turns out the gravestone was actually Spooky's mom, by the way. I still stand by my statement. New rooms include this weird electrical door place, this horrifying clown room with the clown locked up and totally unable to escape, and a room where you could pick up some tiny hands. Bring the tiny hands that you find to a furnace and you can melt them down and get a key. It's all going pretty well. It's a shame that Spooky's like, oh hey, what's going on? On. Here's eight zillion enemies, I'll see you later. After dealing with the shenanigans of Spooky, you can now continue into the true GL Laboratory, the final area of the game. Well, technically, this is the final area of the game, but you immediately fall through the floor into the back rooms or some shit. This is the Root Basement, a weird red basement full of death and probably moss. To escape this basement, you have to build this pinwheel medallion to put into the door. The first part comes from this pinned up dead person who's actually dead this time. No fake outs, 
like with Long Larry, I swear. The second piece is just chilling under this hatch, and the last piece comes from ripping this weird torso open. You can now use the medallion to get the key card and key card your way back into GL Labs. Now it's the final area. Continuing onward, you enter the seal chamber where Spooky's like, hey, you should leave this place, it's not cool. This part is where the game splits into one of two endings, good and bad, you know the drill. If you just immediately sacrifice the doll to this machine, this enacts the bad ending, which I'll cover first. Giving up the doll, your game turns to static as text reads, it was a nightmare, the night I saw the devil. You're thrown into this dark maze and given a gun. Let's go, we can shoot things! Wandering the maze, you have to shoot down these amalgamated soldiers who come after you. Everything's going well until eventually you turn a corner and the game fires your gun at this girl in a red cloak, killing her on the spot. This girl was spooky before she died and this whole section was a representation of the guy who killed her after his PTSD went off. Except it turns out that it wasn't a random guy who had PTSD and killed her, it was her dad who then proceeded to plant the gun on a random person after he killed her. This was definitely a twist I didn't see coming and it really explains why her dad just went insane trying to bring her back and apparently try to gain her forgiveness as he says in his own words. No times for feelings though, the building's exploding! Evacuate into this train station, not before killing this random person who's just in your way, and escape the lab. You make it outside of the mansion and watch as the mansion itself explodes, releasing all of the evil spirits and dooming the world for eternity. Nice going, dumbass. Now, if you want to get the good ending, you have to go back to the lab and enter this side room. Inside is a summoning circle and a computer, ooh, complete with a genesis, I'm about to run some bonanza bros on this thing. What you have to do to get the computer working is complete the circle by going back into the root basement from earlier and finding three candles. It won't be so easy however because now there's a specimen down there hunting you. It's pretty easy to avoid it, you just can't look in its direction and it won't attack you, but without the doll this time to heal you, it can be a bit difficult at times. Find all three black candles, run it back upstairs and complete the ritual. What you have to do now is basically free up space in the ceiling machine that you used the doll in in the bad ending. To do this, you gotta get rid of an extra spirit in there, to which you can choose from three of the specimen that have chased you previously. I chose the deer man because I am, without a doubt, their biggest hater. Lead the specimen through a bunch of rooms until you come across this hellish area where you can finally get rid of the specimen who is able to have their spirit freed. With room now open inside of that ceiling machine, you can use the doll on it, go through the whole thing with the gun in the evacuating again, and find yourself watching the mansion explode once more. This time, however, it stays blue instead of turning red, and we all know that blue is the good guy yeah. color, so that's how you know you got the good ending. The game ends with you putting the spirits inside to rest, Spooky is finally reunited with her family in the afterlife, and this game and its story finally come to an end. Unless you play endless mode, which I'm not going to be talking about. It's an endless mode of the mansion with new layouts and new specimen. The only thing I do want to mention about it though, is that one of the specimen that was added was goddamn white face from I'm Scared. That is so cool. And that was the not so jump scare filled Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. I had no clue just how much I'd be invested in this game when I started it. I always thought this was just a game where you go through a thousand rooms and the jump scares would just ramp up in intensity, but it was so much more than I thought it could have been. The gameplay, the stories, the scares, they're all on par when it comes to quality. I will say though, I think the Karamari Hospital was the scariest mode, but once again, hospital settings give me the creeps. I could go on about this game. Hell, you you probably noticed that this was one of the longer videos I've had on my channel. Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion is a super fun horror game filled with scares, some decent challenge, a great story, and one creepy ass puppet guy that I hope I never have to see again. I do think it was kind of funny that a game with the word jump scare in the title has like no jump scares to be found. So in spirit of that, I created my own jump scare that I'll be hitting you all with right now. Unfortunately, I have like no money, so this is the highest quality I could get. Oh, man.